Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton, and I am here at Modex in our booth, and I am joined by my friend Brett Wood, who's president and CEO over at the Toyota Material Handling of North America, also overseeing Raymond, also on the board of Bastion, also newly elected to uh, the ITA as well, involved with MHI, all these things, right? I, That's I right. Mean, we were just saying that uh, you really don't have time to sleep, right? No, sometimes <laughs> sleeping is optional. Yeah. That's Absolutely. okay. I would, wouldn't have it any other way. I know. And I think you have such a, a passion for the, the industry that's certainly contagious. And I think it's such a, a great thing. Uh, yeah, but before we kind of dive into discussion fully, why don't you just kind of give us the, the brief overview of, of Toyota Material Handling North America and, and what that kind of encompasses. Okay. So Toyota Material Handling North America, or TMHNA, mm-hmm. an acronym, oversees the Toyota brand and the Raymond brands in right. North America. So we have about five factories now, soon to be another uh, factory. Mm. Make an announcement soon on that. And building forklifts. Our factory in Indiana builds 190 forklifts a day. Wow. Our Raymond facilities, they're building over 100 forklifts a day. It's pretty yeah. amazing. And the 15,000 people are part of this mm-hmm. group organization, not just manufacturing, but also engineering, service, support, through sales, through our dealers. Mm-hmm. We also have some equity dealers that we own, but we have a great dealer network that supports all the customers all around the USA, Canada, Mexico, mm-hmm. and, and everywhere. Bastion, since you mentioned Bastion, Bastion was acquired by Toyota Industries a couple right. years ago. I enjoy being involved with them on their board, and it, it broadens the opportunities for customers to not only buy a forklift from Toyota Raymond, but now with Bastion products, they mm. can support them solving all their problems uh, with uh, everything. With, yeah. yeah, with material handling, and whether it's conveyor, automation, sortation, and, and so forth. So it's it's a, been a great uh, opportunity to be able to be a solutions provider mm. and not just a forklift provider. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's very interesting, too, and especially we see, you know, how the industry has evolved. I mean, mm-hmm. we look around here at, at Modex, and, and, you know, obviously it's uh, it's not just about forklifts anymore, oh, right? Man, man. You know, there's so much else going on. So I, I'm curious from, from your perspective, you know, we, we like to check in with each other, right, mm-hmm. at these events. So so tell us a little bit about what you're, you're seeing in the, the industry as some of the, the top trends or some of the things that are, are top of mind. Okay. That's great. And uh, matter of fact, seeing it firsthand here at the show, yeah. uh, I would say automation comes to mind as one of the key mm. topics. So a lot of it is driven by technology. Technology is getting so much better, being able to automate vehicles, forklifts, AMRs, mm. no matter what the size is. So technology is getting better, but also being driven by the lack of employees at some customers mm. that can drive forklifts. So there's, there's a demand for customers to say, hey, we need our product moved. We don't have enough people to hire, right. so can it be automated? Mm. Uh, so that's that's really, over. I would say over the last couple of years, been an interesting topic with a lot of customers, mm. and it'll grow. Yeah. Uh, to, to more automation. So automation is one trend that I'm definitely seeing and, and observing here at the show. The other one is electrification. Mm. So our industrial truck association collects all the data about forklifts that are sold in in North America. And 66% of what was sold last year was electric. Oh wow. 66%. That's a lot. It it is. And people think about automobiles and 
Mm. You know, that's what makes the news, electric cars. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know that's less than 10% of the market. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, here it's yeah. maybe even seven or eight. Mm. So 66 is, is pretty high. We've been in the, you know, electric forklift world a long time. Raymond just celebrated their 100-year anniversary yeah. last year. Yeah, I was there. It was yep. fantastic. It was great, wasn't yes, it? And yeah. So that's 100 years of electric forklifts. Mm -hmm. When you think about electric vehicles or electric power. Right. So electrification is an important trend. There are regulations mm -hmm. that are influencing that. For example, California yes. and CARB will be having some announcements coming up with a phase in or a phase out, depending how you look at it. A mm. phase out would be if you're looking at it from an engine product point of view. Right. A phase in would be if you're looking at it from an electrification point of view. Okay. So there are going to be more electric forklifts in the state of California because of CARB's mm. uh, regulation. And then what states follow after that. So regulations right. will have an impact on how many customers acquire and decide to go electric. Another trend that's related is different types of batteries mm. and lithium-ion batteries. Right. And I don't know if you've seen it around the show here. Yes. I, I've seen a lot more lithium-ion batteries than I've ever seen before, different types of charging techniques. So technology is getting better. It, it's actually, I, I think, helping with the longevity, runtime, mm. probably the challenge for most customers are costs. So when the costs start to come down a little bit on some of this new technology, you're probably going to see more, more lithium-ion, more different types of right. technology, maybe maybe even fuel cell mm -hmm. as, a, as a power source for forklifts in the future also. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't see it at the show so much, but you asked about industry trends. I'm starting to hear more, too, about sustainability initiatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think Which that's I think is great. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's customers mm -hmm. asking about us as a supplier, what are your sustainability right. initiatives and goals? Whether it's the companies like ours that are taking our, we just installed a lot of solar panels on okay. two different facilities, one mm -hmm. at Raymond in New York, one at Toyota in Indiana. Mm -hmm. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. It, it'll help us generate, you know, clean power. And I, I also think it's a trend. I just met with a lot of college students today. They're I looking know. for companies. I heard you had a big line of students wanting to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, but they're looking for companies that have sustainability goals and initiatives. Mm. So the younger generation, I think we could use it as a way to recruit talent. Yes. Whether you're, if you're doing sustainability, you probably are, but it, maybe you need to promote it even a little bit mm. more than you are. So. Yeah. Yeah, that, w that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think it's interesting, too, that you, you pointed that out and kind of the, the future generation and, and that sustainability aspect. Because I, I do some, some adjunct teaching my, myself as That's well. Right. And, yeah, so it's funny. We recently were going to have a test, and they're like, is the, is the test going to be online? And I'm like, um... I don't think so. I think it's going to be on paper. And someone was like, you know, that's that's a lot of paper to be using. Like, they're very, you know, conscious yeah. of that, I think. And I think that's a, an important thing to, to point out there. And, and it is interesting to see, you know, out here on the, the floor and the, the focus on sustainability. Mm -hmm. I, I know somebody up there in B Hall or C Hall, but their their mission is to, to clean the rivers in, in the country. But they take all of the plastic waste, and now they're manufacturing that plastic waste into plastic pallets, actually. Very interesting oh, stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, seeing all those types of things, and, and I'm curious, you know, especially as we talk about technology, right, and the automation uh, mm -hmm. evolution and how products are, are coming like that, and even the different energy solutions, too. I know that, you know, one of your kind of core fundamental things and at Toyota's fundamental thing is, is safety as well. So I'm mm -hmm. curious, how do you make sure as you are developing these new technologies or embracing these new technologies or maybe even from a, a bastion perspective, mm -hmm. putting new technologies together in one facility, how do you ensure that you're maintaining those same safety levels mm -hmm. in that development? Yeah. So safety is a great topic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, so safety is, needs to be part of a corporate culture, I yes. feel. So we start every meeting at Toyota, mm -hmm. no matter the topic, safety first. Safety first. Right. So, so if I'm having a monthly review meeting and there's 20 topics, quality, sales, production, suppliers, procurement, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we always start with safety first. 
Right. And then actually from quality right after that. Yeah. Yeah. So so it, it it's ingrained that it's important. Mm. No matter who's in the meeting or the discussion you're having out in the factory. Mm. Uh, so I, I think it's important to make it part part of the culture. You talked about new products and mm. new product design and there's usually a list of criteria and productivity, performance, recyclability or sustainability, but safety is also one of those criteria right. components. And then tr talk about training too. So even mm. operator training, now with the Industrial Truck Association, I'll shift to that for a minute, the group, which is a, an association full of forklift companies, basically competitors, all agree yeah. that every operator needs to be trained appropriately for the forklift that they work on. Absolutely. And with that, we started National Forklift Safety Day. Yes. Right. Our June favorite holiday. <laughs> <laughs> June 11th. Yes. Coming up. So it's always the second Tuesday in June, mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., but it's also available online. And it's our 11th year of having National Fork of Safety Day. OSHA is usually part of it. And so we've got a good collaboration with OSHA. And then what I'm happy about is now we've talked about this so much that other countries are also doing their National oh, really? Fork. So Fantastic. I heard Australia's having one, UK is mm -hmm. having one. And, uh, and my dream someday, not National Fork of Safety, but wouldn't it be great to have a global, global safety yeah, day yeah. or maybe week or... Yeah. Calendars, I'm sure, would be challenging, but it's just great to see that anybody who is around a forklift is starting to be more aware that uh, operators need to be safely trained. There are a lot, I was mentioning to you, there's a lot of operators driving forklifts. About four, four and, five, and a half million yeah, people, yeah, we think, yeah. that their desk, their office is a forklift. Yes, yeah. Four and a half million people, so the emphasis on getting them trained safely so they can get home safe to their to their families every night is really important to Toyota, but oh, yeah. our industry too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think even, you know, from the standpoint of the, you know, your customers too are, who are utilizing the forklifts and buying those forklifts, I mean, they want the same thing, right? They want their employees to come in, you know, as they say, 10 Operate fingers, 10 safety. toes, yeah. leave with 10 fingers, 10 toes, and, right, and go home to their family. And even reduce product damage. Training helps yeah. a lot yeah. with, with uh, not just safety, but also reducing accidents from product damage and mm. hitting a rack or a wall or a pallet. So technology's helping, too. Uh, Toyota just launched a system called Sense and Sense Plus. Right. So if, it, if the forklift were to back up and be near an object or a person, the forklift automatically slows down and stops. Yes. So I think you're going to see that technology also throughout the industry, collision avoidance type of systems. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, think, I love that technology because I think it's so... I mean, we have it in our cars now, right? Right. So why would we not have it in right. our forklifts? I mean, in, in some aspects and, you know, some scenarios, I mean, even, you know, a, a forklift accident could be could be as bad or, or worse than mm -hmm. a, a car accident. So yeah. we should have that same kind of safety technology in place. And I love that you guys are embracing that and, and making that happen and, and pushing for that in the industry. I mean, I think it's super, super important. Yeah. And, and Raymond has launched, um, are you familiar with the order pickers? As you go up, yes. you, you wear a, a safety belt mm -hmm. and it should be latched. Right. And many people forget to do that. Yeah, I, I've uh, yelled at a few <laughs> warehouse employees <laughs> okay. who have come by me and they're not latched. Yeah. <laughs> so now there's a system where the interlocking device mm -hmm. is now gives a warning to the operator yeah. that you're not attached. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's on display at the Raymond booth. And, yeah. Uh, I, I love that feature. If I was a customer, yeah. I would buy that every time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think that should be, I think it should be mandatory, I would say. Yeah. Almost, yeah. Because yeah. I, I mean, I think that is such a, a, a great thing because it is, you know, even uh, uh, like in one, uh, one operation that I worked in, uh, we had Raymond forklifts there. We had the order okay. selectors, a lot of them. And, and, and yeah, even sometimes, you know, they want to jump on the machine and just yeah. move it a little oh, bit. In a hurry. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're yeah. hooking it up. Yeah. 
Uh, so I, my point is just technology is great. Yeah. It's going to make our products better, efficient, and safer. Yeah, in the absolutely. Future. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's such a great thing for for looking forward to the future and even the right now to be able to make it safe. And mm -hmm. and so as we we talk about the the future here, you know, we kind of mentioned mm -hmm. you know all these uh, students that were interested in, in mm -hmm. talking to you here, but I know that, um, and I, I think the, the last time we spoke back at, at Promat mm -hmm. last year, we were talking about the investment that Toyota had made in the manufacturing workshop at, at the one school, right, oh, for right. students. Right, um, so the uh, Forklift Learning Studio yes, yeah. at Cornell University. Right. And I just visited there recently. Yeah, how's that going? saw it in action. Yeah. So it's been one year, mm -hmm. and it's going great. Uh, I walked into their studio. There was a forklift. There were tables with components on it. Mm. And then over on the side, we donated an engine. The engine was in about 100 pieces. <laughs> and I nice. said, what are you doing with that? Yeah. And the professor said, oh, every other week we take it apart and we have another group of students put it back together. Oh, wow. And that's, these are engineering students at an yeah. Ivy League school that they're not technicians or mechanics. Mm. You know, these are engineering students. Yeah. And, and the beauty of it, I could see how happy the professors are and the students, is in the morning they're learning theoretical. Mm. Fluid, dynamics, heat transfer, statics, yeah. physics, whatever it is, but it's all theoretical. Then in the afternoon, they get to go down to the forklift learning studio mm. and they get hands-on related to what they just learned in the morning. Uh -huh. And that was the whole dream and the image of it because mm -hmm. a forklift has a cylinder, has hydraulics, has yeah. chains, has engines, or it's electric, it has motors, mm -hmm. or it has electricity, it has physics and dynamics because a forklift has a, a, a stability triangle. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was great to see that the, the students basically tearing apart our truck and yeah. putting it back <laughs> together, but learning basic engineering principles because of, which, which was, yeah. was the dream of mm. Professor Brian Kirby when he came up with that idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's fantastic that you've done that and it's such a great experience for the students. So so I'm curious as you were talking to the, the students today mm. here at Modex, I mean maybe we could look at this from two sides, from from the student perspective but also the, the company perspective too. And what are some advice that you would give to I guess the student about you know why they should be interested in our in our industry because I think that's one thing that, you know, has been a, a topic of conversation within the industry is, you know, how do we get the newer generation to be interested in material handling mm -hmm. and, and coming into our industry to be able to, to continue to, you know, help us grow and, and address right. some of those labor challenges as well. That's a great topic, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And I have a passion for it. To, I know you to, um, to get <laughs> students into our industry. It's funny, I'll start some of my presentations lately. So raise your hand if you want to, you know, work for Google and Amazon. A lot of them raise their hand. Yeah. Okay, raise your hand if you want to work with Forklifts. Nobody raises their hand. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I went to college. Yeah. I said, well, okay, then now give me 10 minutes and see if I can change your mind. Right? Yeah. So that's part of the presentation. But I went to college, and uh, I never said I was going to work with Forklifts. Mm. You, you, you just don't think of that as a career path. Material handling, supply chain, logistics, been in the news a lot in the last couple of years, mm. you know, thanks to COVID and so forth, and maybe. So I think it's kind of elevated our presence, maybe right. amongst students and, you know, general news. But so I'll show them examples of automation, robotics, mm. and how a forklift touches everything that we either eat or own or wear or, or sit on. And then how can that, if you're a design engineer, mechanical engineer, industrial engineer, you're thinking about how to make that piece of equipment more efficient. Think about all the engineering principles that forklift has. It's even more than a car. A car doesn't have hydraulics. Yeah. It doesn't have a mass. Right. You know, that kind of thing. So from an engineering point of view, show some good examples there. From a, say, industrial engineer or a data analyst point of view, our industry probably has more data than we know what to do. So much data. I, I, I mean, it's crazy to think about because even you just look at like from an e-commerce perspective, I mean, every single thing, I mean, there's like data coming out every single second. And, and yeah. when that sneaker was ordered from wherever it came from, put in a box, sent to a warehouse, how, how did it get from point A to B to C to D, and then the last mile, oh, yeah. getting it to the store, and so... I think it's, it could be really fascinating mm. if, if you're a young data analyst or uh, 
industrial systems type of mm-hmm. type of engineer. It's changing a lot. I, I heard someone say that probably this world will change, that part of the world, material handling, supply mm-hmm. chain, will change more in the next 10 years than, than the last 100 years. Really? That, that, that was a, a futurist speaking yesterday. Yeah. 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 And, and I tend to agree with him that I wish I was 18. You know, I wish I was <laughs> 21 years old again so yeah, that, yeah. So that I, I could be part of this. Right. Um, I mean, you've got, I, I said automation robotics. Mm-hmm. Now you're putting them together. You've got an automated vehicle with a robot arm on top of it right. going from point A to point B and picking up item C. Mm-hmm moving it to bin D and then going and finding another item that's even bigger right. or has a different center ground. I mean, I, I'm amazed at how yeah, it knows yeah, to pick I mean, up all these different items and then move it to where it needs to be and no one interacts with it. So that's, yeah, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Technology, like you said, how do we get young people interested in our industry? It's gone, just even focus went from engine power, mm-hmm. gas, diesel, LP, compressed natural gas, maybe fuel cells, mm-hmm. battery, lead acid, lithium ion, what's mm-hmm. the next battery technology? Hybrid. Right. And then I put a big question mark at the end of all this. What's the future? Mm-hmm. What's going to power a forklift 10 years from now? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting and I think that's definitely the the way is that technology and you know showing them that there's uh, you know this, this and, coolness about and we need those young people that help us find that yeah, what yeah. Is that? and figure it out and then right? all that the curiosity. data that goes with yeah. it I mean yeah. right Toyota's gonna launch every truck will have telematics on it mm. every truck yeah and it's kind of like you know flip the switch and, and get the data mm. I mean telematics tells you everything about that truck right. where it was when it was driving when it was backing up when it was lifting when it was lowering when was the operator taking a smoke break? You know, <laughs> it, it has everything about it. Yeah. When did it hit a wall? Mm. You know, it has a shock sensor. On. So, what what do you do with that data? Mm. How do you make that customer more efficient yeah. with that data? Mm. And, and that's where you know we could always hire more people to to do yeah. those kind of things for us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think there's a lot of power within that that data and being able to, to create that visibility. But as we get that next generation kind of involved and interested and in, and being able to to get creative with those things mm. and then get creative mm-hmm. with the data, I think is such an important thing. So now you know on the the topic of you know new technology and, and getting things almost showcased in a in a sense for for people coming into the industry or that are already in the industry mm-hmm. as well. You guys are going to be doing a, a pretty large automation mm. project internally, right? So tell us a little bit we about are. that. We are. So at Toyota's corporate headquarters mm. and facility in Columbus, Indiana, we own quite a bit of land there. And we, next to our factory, which is, you know, it's about a million square feet, of it's pretty, mm. pretty big. We have a factory that builds forklifts every day. Matter of fact, about 190 forklifts every day, every four yeah. minutes of forklifts built there. Next to that is a parts distribution center, mm. a very good, efficient parts distribution center. The demand for our parts uh, lately has, has really been high. Yeah. And, and everybody, mm. the whole industry, to, to be honest. So the uh, importance of delivering is, you know, now everybody wants their package overnight. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all now in that mode. <laughs> so you got to deliver quickly. Mm. And you got to, you know, have parts in, in stock and ready to go. So we are about to invest uh, millions of dollars into our parts distribution center to make it more automated, mm. to use like an auto store type right. of system, a carousel system, uh, some conveyor and so forth. So basically we're upgrading, we're mm. automating our own uh, parts distribution, our own facility. And I'm so excited about it that I think it's gonna turn into a showcase, yeah. if you will. So a, an area that when customers or dealers or anyone, yourself, come mm-hmm. and visit our factory, well, let's go across the parking lot. You just saw a forklift from me. Now mm-hmm. we're going to show you how parts can be automated and right. really efficiently. From a customer point of view, it might give them some ideas on yeah. how they could upgrade their facility mm-hmm. without looking at a computer yeah. or a brochure. Now they can actually see Visualize. our yeah, hands-on yeah. our yeah. facility and 
we could help maybe explain it even better to them. So, so yeah, that'll be later this year by by the end of the summer and the fall. We should have yeah. that up and running. Pretty excited. Definitely, and definitely yeah. looking forward to to seeing that and how all different solutions come together. And I think it will be a, a fantastic showcase. It'll be mentioned. great. And yeah. like your warehouse type of audience. You yeah. know, we have our own warehouse. And yeah. We need to, you know, we need to upgrade it ourselves. So yeah, yeah it'll. It'll be a, the, the investments have been exciting. We're, I've got a, a phrase that I like to use. The, the industry is pretty healthy mm-hmm. right now. We just finished an industry that was probably the top five of all time. Mm-hmm. It was down a little bit from the prior. The prior had a big pent up demand. Right. So it was a crazy year mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three was down, but compared to the year before, but top five of all time. So still mm-hmm. pretty healthy. This year will probably be a little, a little flat, maybe okay. similarly. But then we're predicting the next five years for some steady, steady growth. And my phrase I like to say is to repair your roof on a sunny day. Mm. Don't wait for the rain. <laughs> That's so a good in, idea. So invest yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, make our world better right. now if you can. So that's one. We just also invested in our factory for automated welding mm. and video cameras that can inspect the welds oh, wow. automatically. Interesting. I know. So, you know, multi-million dollar investment that mm. I just got a great demonstration. We just finished it in January. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the technology is not only making products better, it's making how the products are made mm. better. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I love that you're embracing the technology too, mm. and, and you're embracing the technology not only for you know the need right now, but the need for the future too. And I, I think that's such a, a great example to, to set. And I, I think that you know it's gonna be an inspiring place to go for a lot of people, whether it's on the, the manufacturing side or the distribution side. Or to warehouse. Be able to, or, yeah, to yeah. be able to see those those yeah. two different sides of things. So so always very interesting to talk to you here, Brad, and always appreciate the time connecting at these shows um, and getting the latest on, on Toyota and just the industry in general. Um, so really appreciate you coming by and talking to me today, sir. Likewise, thank All you very right. much. I always enjoy it, Kevin. Absolutely. Great job with your show. All right. Thank you very much, Brett. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Latte. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.